Hello, my dear audience. In this episode, we're gonna visit the Garcia house. Built on pillars with a curving roof and glass walls, the building looks like a human eye that floats in the air. It's also nicknamed the Rainbow House because of its use of colored glass panels. Built in the Hollywood Hills, the house offers a great view of downtown Los Angeles. The house is built against the hillside and is leaning on two V-shaped pillars. This makes the balcony almost 60 feet above the ground. The house consists of two separated living quarters under one roof. The terrace in the middle is completely open in the air. Many houses by John Lawner were built against hillsides. But the Garcia house belongs, together with the chemosphere, to the only two designs that are completely free of the ground. While the chemosphere is more famous and iconic, this house is lesser known. But personally, I prefer this house above the chemosphere. It's equally spectacular and futuristic, but then larger, more transparent and with a beautiful shaped roof. The house was commissioned by Russell Garcia, a music composer who composed the soundtrack for many Hollywood movies. Russell Garcia loved to give private concerts at his home, so therefore he needed a large living room with a high and crooked ceiling for better sound reverberation. This explains the unique shape of the house, with a curved roof that is almost 30 feet high. Movie lovers recognize this house from Lethal Weapon 2, where it was used as the home of a mighty South African drug lord. In the movie, the house was destroyed in a spectacular way. But thank God, it was only a scale model. Pulling the house off the hill by simply removing one of its telts with a tow truck as Mel Gibson does in Little Weapon 2, is not possible. Let me explain how the house is constructed. Although the house might look a bit unsafe at first sight, it is extremely stable. The secret behind its durability lies in a strong foundation. The first step was to place six concrete pillars with foundations buried deep in the ground. Then, two V-shaped stelts were placed in the ground. On the pillars and stelts, an iron rectangle was placed. This construction formed the base on which the entire house was placed. The floor was created by simply placing wooden panels on this construction. On this platform, two very large curving iron beams were placed. Between these roof edges, a wooden skeleton was built. This skeleton was covered with wooden plates protected with a coating made of plaster. The outside walls are made of glass windows with thin wooden window frames. A wall made of rock stones creates some privacy in the garden. This wall continues into the house and functions as a wall of the kitchen. This wall forms together with a stone fireplace the only two stone elements in a house that solely exists of glass, wood and iron. The house itself is extremely lightweight, while the construction is very strong. Even if you would remove one of the stelts, the house would safely balancing on its construction. Sorry Mel Gibson, but your movie is debunked. We start our tour at street level. As you can see, the house is hardly recognizable from the street. We step through the front door at the second floor level. Directly behind it, the house opens towards the landscape. At the right side is a stair that descends down towards the terrace. Here you can see that the stair has no floor underneath it and it hangs between two separated parts of the house. Through the stairwell, you can see the ground of the hillside. Behind this door is a storage closet. The balcony functions as an outdoor living room, blurring the verge between inside and outside, as is usual for John Lautner. On 
On this floor plan you can see that the house is divided in two parts, the sleeping area and the living part. The balcony forms a bridge between the two parts. But why is the house so strictly separated? The commissioner Russell Garcia was a believer in the Baha'i faith. And according to his religion you are not allowed to eat in the same space where you also sleep. Therefore, the house needed a piece of open air between the two spaces with different functions. Only in the left side it was allowed to eat, and sleeping was only allowed in the right side. Ok, let's now take a look in the living quarters. Through this door you step right into the dining area. Behind the dining area is a kitchen. At the end of the kitchen is a small balcony that looks over the hillside behind the house. The sitting area is placed on a lower level than the dining area. This creates a separated space without having any walls. The high ceiling and the large windows make the room filled with sunlight and feel very spatial. The roof doesn't descend all the way down to the floor, leaving a rectangular gap at the end of the living room. This window between the floor and the roof adds to the floating and transparent character of the house. Behind the rectangular glass window is a balcony with a stair that leads down to the garden. But before we go outside, we first gonna take a look in the sleeping quarters. A corridor with closets connects all the rooms together. Originally, the house didn't have a second floor level. The space above the sleeping area was used for a carport. It's a waste that the carport doesn't exist anymore, because it made the house more transparent, more organic and more open to the air. In 1968, only six years after the finalization of the house, the carport was transformed into a master bedroom. Now we go to the garden. Directly behind the iron stair is a wooden stair that goes down the hill. Down here is a pathway that leads to a large swimming pool that echoes the oval shape of the house. The swimming pool was designed together with the house, but due to lack of funds, Russell Garcia never had a chance to realize this pool. Only a few years ago, the new owners had enough money to build this John Lawner designed pool. We end our tour with a nightly view of the house. This was your tour guidance. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.